there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. Greetings everyone and welcome to this video. In this video I would just like to warn people about the channel called Nicholson1968 on YouTube and I would like to refute some of the false teachings that he has on his channel and I would like to start off with this video that he recently put up called What Are You Missing? Let Down The Nets in which he has some false teaching in regards to Luke 5 in the Bible and now I will read the passage that he is teaching from in Luke 5 so we can get an understanding of the context and then we'll listen to what he's teaching and I will show you and refute his false teachings using the word of God. Luke 5 verses 4 to 10 Now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draught. And Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word I will let down the net. And when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net break, and they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. And so was also James and John the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. Okay, I just wanted to read the passage out in its context to refresh your memory, especially if you've not read it in a while. And now we will listen to what he is teaching about this. And I will show you that it is very dangerous teaching. I'm going to switch over to the King James. And I will tell you this, they make the King James harder to read on websites than other versions. Notice how it's, it's, it's not even, it's harder to read. Um, as far as um, lettering and spacing, okay? So let me read it this way after Jesus says what he says it says and Simon okay so now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a drought okay uh, Luke 5 5 now notice what Simon says next and Simon answered and said unto him master we have told all night and have taken nothing Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Singular. Here's what's going on. Jesus just told him, let down your nets. And you know what Simon said to him? Or what he was thinking? What does Jesus know about fishing? I am the fisherman. Okay, he says that Simon was thinking, what does Jesus know about fishing? I am the fisherman. I think that's just pure eisegesis, because nowhere in the text does it say that. In fact, see if you look at verse 9, it actually gives us a little revelation of what Peter was thinking beforehand. Because it says there, for he was astonished and all that were with him at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. So why would it say in verse 9 that he was astonished if he was expecting a catch? You know, so that's given us a little hint of what he was thinking beforehand. That he wasn't expecting a catch. He doubted the word of Jesus and he doubted the power of Jesus. That's why I think he only put down a net and not nets as Jesus commanded. And I think it's interesting that if you look at verse 7 as well, when the net break, they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. 
they looked to other men for help, even though they've got the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords with them in the ship. You know, I think this is clearly teaching that we should be focused upon Christ to save us and not other men and all our hope and trust should be in Him alone. Okay, now as we continue in this video, Nicholson 1968 starts teaching stuff that's very dangerous because he teaches it in a way that points people to themselves and not to Christ. And I will show you a lot of Gnostic teaching creeps in. And you know what Simon said to him? Or what he was thinking? What does Jesus know about fishing? I am the fisherman. I am tired. I've been tolling all night. I'll do what you say. And I'll let down the net. Not the nets. Big difference. Okay? He let down one net. He did not do what Jesus asked him to do. Because here's the thing. If he goes out and doesn't catch anything, he's got he's to clean all of the nets. This way, he just puts down one net, and he doesn't catch anything, he's just got one net to clean. Okay, let's stop there. This is just more eisegesis, because that is just not found in the text. You know, Peter was not concerned that he would have to do work later on. Thus the reason that he only put down a net and not nets as Jesus commanded. Peter was a hard worker, you know? And the whole point of the whole teaching was that these men were focused upon their work, you know? And the king came, after they toiled all night, the king came and they chose not to rest in him. They chose not to put faith in him to take care of everything. And he has it all twisted. See, even if we look at the title of this video, What Are You Missing? Let Down The Nets. You know, it points people to themselves. You know, what are you missing? Look to yourself, figure things out yourself rather than pointing people to Christ. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Emphasis on, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God, and also created in Christ Jesus unto good works. You know, we're created unto good works, that God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Works cannot save us, but as Christians we should walk in them out of love for Christ. Okay, I just wanted to show these scriptures because as we continue in this video, we will see that Nicholson 1968 starts pointing people to faith in the work rather than faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners which were in the other ship, and they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Do you understand now why he fell at his feet? Do you understand now why he fell at his feet? Okay, before we listen to what he says about it, I just wanted to point out that he skips verse 9 here, a very crucial verse to this passage. For he was astonished, and all that were with him, at the draught of the fishes which they had taken. That's why Peter fell down at Jesus' knees and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. He did not believe his word, and he was trusting in his works, and putting his faith in men, rather than the Lord. Jesus Christ. And I would just like to show you more proof that it was due to him having little faith. All we need to do is use proper principles of hermeneutics when interpreting the scriptures. Interpret scripture with scripture. Look at this passage, Matthew 14, 29 to 31. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, 
He walked on the water to go to Jesus, but when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand, and caught him, and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? You see, he had problems with faith, little faith, and he doubted Jesus. And let's continue and listen to what he says, and you'll see it's just utter nonsense what he is teaching. Do you understand now why he fell at his feet? I am a sinful man. Because this is what's going on in, in the world, in my life too, in, in, in Nicholson 1960. When you do not do what he asks you to do, you do not let down your nets, and you just let down one net, or you do it halfway, and you expect something from that, what are you missing? You're missing the fish. You're, you're missing the bigger picture. Do you see now how this whole video is just pointing people to themselves? What are you missing? You're missing the fish, you're missing the bigger picture. He can see this picture, friends, you can't. Faith in Christ is not even mentioned in the entire video. And that's what Luke 5 is all about. Faith. And you know what? This is a false gospel and it needs to be sharply rebuked. And you know what? If you do not believe and put faith in the Lord Jesus Christ of the Bible, the Bible teaches that you will end up in hell. And I say that in love, and I say that to anyone that comes across this video, avoid this channel. He has been reached out to and rebuked by other godly men, yet he still continues to falsely teach. You know, as Christians we should stand upon the truth of the gospel, and anyone that's speaking contrary to the gospel, we should warn people about them. And now I'm going to continue in this video and expose more of his false teachings because this man should be utterly exposed because he has a lot of subscribers and he's deceiving a lot of people. All you need to do is go and look at some of his videos and look at the comments section and look at all the people saying great work and things like that. What, do you, what is the part of it you think that people aren't going to like? What is, <clears throat> what's the most shocking aspect of this for people you think? Well, first thing Casey's touched on that I and a lot of people are now are actually picking up on the, the Nephilim, the fallen angels, that that was hidden from us, the story of Enoch, the book of Jasher. That's why people who follow me, I'm starting to download those on my on my my YouTube. Um, it's been on my website for a long time, but I'm putting it on there now. But this is I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna hit some points. One, the Holy Spirit, hear me is the feminine side of God. Then, okay. So, this is part of the big problem that a lot of people will just tune me out because they don't, if you don't understand, let me just say this, if you do not understand the Holy Spirit being feminine, if you still think Godhead is a trinity, an all-male trinity, then I, I can't help you. I tell you something friends, be wary of these channels that are teaching that the Holy Spirit is feminine. Look at all these scriptures in the New Testament and there's plenty more than these friends that point to the Holy Spirit being He. You know there's an incredible emphasis throughout the whole Bible of God being masculine. I'm not going to get into the feminine pronoun in Hebrew and things like that in this video because it could take like 30 minutes alone to do that. So I'm just warning you, be wary of these channels. I will tell you this, there's one thing more powerful than God. And it's not a trick question. And people need to realize it. He gives us. And, he can, and, and people need to understand that. Um, he gives us free will to choose. Whatever that is. Um, you know, just like what Casey and I... If you choose to use the numbers for evil, you choose to make movies for evil, you choose to do anything, and because that's it. We're in a world of duality, and you are either inspired by one or the other. And uh, I think he, I think he is all knowing to answer that question. 
Um, but we do have free will, um, you know, to, to, to choose. That is more powerful than God, and people don't really get that sometimes. To, to, to choose. That is more powerful than God, and people don't really get that sometimes. To, to, to choose. That is more powerful than God, and people don't really get that sometimes. Let me tell you something, friends. God is omnipotent, he's omniscient, and he is omnipresent. And through his omnipotence, he gave man free will. So the will of man is not more powerful than God. And according to his own logic, if man's will was more powerful than God, then God would cease to be omnipotent. This is utter foolishness. Go ahead, what do y'all think? Well, my personal opinion is there is no time in heaven. So God knows the beginning from the end. Um, when Jesus frees us from the bondages of time, um, we too will be timeless. Okay, obviously that was not Nicholson 1968 speaking, but it was from a person that was on the same radio show as him, and Nicholson 1968 is teaching the same nonsense as this, and it's found on the channel Round Saturn's Eye as well, that Jesus supposedly came to save us from the bondage of time. This cannot be found in the Bible, friends. Jesus came to save us from sin, not time. And do you know what? There's a lot of these channels, these professing Christian channels on YouTube teaching this. They were supposedly in some sort of time prison. It's not in the Bible, friends. And God is not this monster that just put us in a prison. It's a lie. And you should avoid these channels at all costs. If you die and go straight to hell then you are already judged, no need for the great white throne judgement, Revelation 20 verses 11 to 15. That's why if you die not knowing you will know the truth, later in the thousand year reign, Revelation 24 to 6, he died for all mankind, it is finished. This is a lie friends, nowhere in the bible does it teach that you have a second chance after death. God gives everyone an opportunity in this life to believe and put faith in the true gospel. Here's Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness and to all nations, and then shall the end come. John 1, 8 to 9, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Romans 1, 18-19 For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath shewed it unto them. Man has a knowledge of God. Man is culpable for his actions. Man has an opportunity in this life, as I said before, to put faith in the true gospel and get saved. There is no second chance after death. Go and read Hebrews 9.27 as well. Everyone has sinned and need to hear the gospel. Without the gospel, man has no hope and they will go straight to hell if they don't put faith in the gospel in this life. Don't believe the liars. I could expand and get into more detail and talk about the white throne judgement and Hebrews 9.27 and things like that, however, I am not going to because I would be here for hours exposing this guy's false teachings. But yeah, people are so used to such rapid imagery and movies and music and well, this world is speeding up, so to speak. And, it's, and people... it's the younger, it's the younger people and, you know, and like I said, I don't, you know, we maybe touched on this last time, but, you know, when I started my YouTube, you know, I did videos and quick and music and I use this I use Satan's tools against him yeah. because most of the young people they're man they're going man they're going you yeah. know you got to get their attention I tell you something friends you cannot use Satan's tools against him we have only one offensive weapon as Christians and that is the sword of the spirit which is the word of God there is so many channels on YouTube trying to expose darkness with darkness there is absolutely no power in that, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doeth make manifest is light. There is only power in the gospel, as we will see here, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and when the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them.
they will only be able to see through the true gospel. So many people on YouTube are trying to use excellency of speech. They're trying to use intellectual arguments to win a soul to Christ. It will never work. There is only power in the gospel. For God, who have commanded the light to shine out of darkness, have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Christians need to learn this, it's not of us. And look at this powerful passage here, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. His power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power. It's all about him, friends. It's all about his power. You know, it's Jesus that will be glorified throughout all of eternity. He is on the throne. He is the king. You know, and you have all these people on YouTube that are claiming special revelation. And then when you listen to what they say, it's contrary to scripture. True teachers will always point you to Christ. And they will always point you to the written word and they will tell you to make sure that everything lines up with scripture. Yeah, and then when you touch on the Bible, now see, you can talk about changing Fruit Loops all day long. But when you're talking about, see, that's the thing with the Christians, uh, the traditional, traditional, hardcore Christians. Uh, when you start talking about changing the Bible, oh my God, just lose your mind. I mean, just whatever. And, you know, when God said, my words will never pass away. My words will never pass away. <laughs> you know, there's the spoken word, and then there's words written down in a physical book. And uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, those are the same people that don't want to read Enoch. Those are the same people that don't want to read Book of Jasser and the 20 other books that are referenced in the Holy Bible that are taken out. Actually got two planes to hit the World Trade Center, hit the Pentagon. For Christ's sake, bless his life, then you really need to be scared. Look at this video he has on his channel, Do You See What I See? Let there be light. The Bible says that God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And he puts Saturn in this video, and look what he does. Boom, he just showed Saturn, right, and then he showed all the light come. Thus he is saying that Saturn said, let there be light. You know, why would he put Saturn in this video, friends, just used a bit of logic. And look at this next video as well. The secret of the cube, Saturn mix. Promotion of this cube. And the occult, they teach that this cube is Satan. And this is not an exposed video. He says the secret of the cube, he has the secret friends. And listen to this blasphemy here. Before time began, there was the cube. Blasphemy, blasphemy, blasphemy. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And look here at this comment. LOL, well I guess that answers my question. You are obviously well aware of the cult of Saturn. Yes, he is. Maybe because he's part of it. Okay, everyone. I'm done with this video. And Nichols in 1968, if you do come across this video. And everyone, obviously, that has came across this video now. I would like to encourage you to put faith in the true gospel. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. You know, Jesus is a mighty Saviour. And he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. 
seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. You know, he's able to save to the uttermost friends. You know, if you're a mason, quit the lodge. If you're a Jesuit, repent. You know, and all you men and women out there deliberately deceiving people, come out from it and come to the Saviour.